Studentpreneur, the podcast about students who are entrepreneurs. Get motivated and keep your energy high. Stories from Studentpreneurs. This episode is sponsored by ID Network, a network of university associations run by studentpreneurs for studentpreneurs. Visit idnetwork.com.au. Welcome to episode 12. My name is Julian Marchand, entrepreneur turned PhD student. Each week, I bring you the best of those individuals who are students and entrepreneurs. I call them studentpreneurs. This week is another special episode on competitions. You've heard before how critical the competitions are to get started or motivated in a super safe environment. On the 8th, 9th and 10th of May, I helped organize a weekend competition called Startup Weekend, held on the Sunshine Coast here in Queensland, Australia. There are a lot of these types of weekend competitions around. Startup Weekend is a franchise. Check their website and check your local competition. The concept is pretty simple. You come on the Friday night with or without an ID. People pitch their IDs. The top IDs get chosen and teams form around those IDs. After that, it's a crazy competition of 54 hours where people build a startup, pivot, eat and barely sleep until the final pitch is on Sunday night. There's so much energy being created. It's worth the exhaustion. You may have noticed that uh, last week postcat was really late. Well, that's because I didn't sleep much. <laughs> Anyhow, at Startup Weekend Sunshine Coast 2015, there were 30 students out of the 90 participants who started startup with designers, developers, creative and business people. And they were held by over 15 mentors. Will they become studentpreneurs? I don't know, but they gave it a fair go. I can't really explain what goes on in there. So how about you hear it from the people who actually did it? They were all up till 3 a.m. checking patents and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. So uh, I've had a really good experience here doing that. No regrets about your no idea? No, it's been fantastic. So yeah. what's, what's happening tomorrow? Is that something? Is that the big Yeah, well, look, we're going to win this competition. We're going to nail it. We've already made 16 sales today. Uh, 16 sales? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had the last tech check in this morning. And we had people just waving money at us, you know. So, uh, so we've already made our sales. So we're going to launch this bad boy on Kickstarter. We just have to do a little bit more product refinement. Yep. But uh, so as soon as we've won this, uh, do you know where we can find the link to Kickstarter? Like where you do you have a Facebook page? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to have through USB. So through SB, all right. So through SB will be up. It'll be on the website. Uh, we're, we're we're working on that. We're just going to register the domain name later and get that working. A bit of a turnaround in DNS times and things like that. Sounds but, great. Uh, we only came up with this name this morning. We've been working on a different project name, but uh, that's where we're at. So, right. well, thank you so much. All the best for the afternoon. No worries. Thanks, Julian. So, uh, what's your name and what's your team's name? Uh, my name's Simon. I'm part of Hitched In, which is a wedding planning app for wedding planners. And what pain points are you answering? For want of a better term, Bridezilla causes a lot of problems for wedding planners. It's part of the stressful thing of planning a wedding. And wedding planners spend a lot of time in communication over very small technical details that could be dealt with in a simpler fashion by making that communication a little more streamlined. So planners would provide for brides a system that counts down their wedding for them the same way that apps that are designed for brides do. But the thing is, brides don't have to manage it themselves. They're doing it in combination with somebody who knows the industry, knows the suppliers, is getting them what they want and need. So... Cool. And did you get some customer validation? Did you go out there and talk to people? <laughs> we certainly did. Uh, okay. I'm not going to say we crashed a wedding, probably. <laughs> oh, well, we did. But yeah, but we, uh, we spoke to some so, recently married so, people. We spoke to some engaged people. And we spoke to some really big event planners. And we spoke to some small to medium sort of individual uh, wedding planners. Uh, we had a couple of people who said when the software's up and running, they'd like to be part of our trial. And we actually had just then uh, someone who dropped an email into our website, which is online. So Excellent. they made an inquiry and they're a complete stranger. We didn't ring them up and tell them we're from Startup Weekend. So that's kind of good validation. That's good customer validation. So, yeah. So I think the thing is that a, a wedding planner who knows the industry knows how important this kind of software can be. Because a cloud-based solution is its the way of the future for the industry. And the fact that nobody's doing it at the moment is... It's crazy, so we're doing it. Excellent. Someone is doing it at the moment. And what did you like about the, the Startup Weekend? I think being surrounded by other people that are in the same mind frame, everyone's going crazy, way too much coffee. But um, it coaches, you know, they come thick and fast. The advice is, I mean, 
if you put a dollar value on it, yeah. you'd like need a v- VC just to get the cash to, to get this far, you know? Like yeah, yeah. what you're getting in this one weekend is enough to actually move into the next phase of, of starting startup. So, that's so what about the next phase? I, do you think this is a business? What are you going to do tomorrow? Well, we're going to sleep tomorrow. <laughs> And then, yeah, we're, well, we've talked about moving forward with it. We need to, I guess, go through another iteration and see what would be involved. And we need to look seriously at how the team is structured, bringing in people that have the skills that we don't have because we've managed an MVP and that's all good and well. But if we were going to approach VCs, we'd need to approach them with a team that's viable. So. Cool. Sounds pretty solid. Cool. All right. All the best for tonight. Thanks, man. Cheers. Hi. Do you want to introduce yourself? Just your name and then the, the name of your team? Hi, I'm Kelsey Lee Estate and I'm part of Yoda, so your own data access. What do, what do you guys do? So we're building a system that allows people who want to access the data that big corporations such as Woolworths are collecting about them and their behaviours and giving the power of that data back to them in an easy-to-understand format. Wow. Have you been able to do any customer validation? Or you... Yeah, we've actually been um, getting a lot of positive feedback. Uh, we've done a bunch of customer surveys. So a lot over of, the weekend? Yep, over the weekend. Um, we've done face-to-face confirmations that this is something people actually want to buy and will actually pay for a lot of customer surveys online using MailChimp that kind of thing so we've been getting a lot of positive um, feedback so we haven't had to pivot yet (laughs) you haven't had to pivot (laughs) and um, you personally what have you what have you liked about this weekend I think just startup weekends in general are a great place to go meet new people try out new things learn new things about business and really putting yourself through the process of of a lean startup but getting as much as you possibly can in such a short amount of time and just really focusing on the MVP like that core value that you can give your customer awesome and uh, what about tomorrow what's going to happen tomorrow is that a business now like is that going to happen I think, think so I think we've got a pretty good start so hopefully over the next few months we'll be able to actually get something out there that people can actually start using yeah so All right. I think it'll keep going <laughs> excellent well, all the best for tonight thank you all right get back into it <laughs> yeah, no. Hi, do you want to um, tell us your name and the name of your team? Yep, so my name is Jamaica. I'm a member of Tube Talk. And what do you guys do? We are a social media platform for YouTubers to collaborate, to share ideas and to be able to search for people in their area, to meet up and collaborate and get to know other YouTubers. Okay, so you're surfing on the YouTube waves, right? Yeah, yeah, because we've found that there's no platform that allows people to collaborate and also people who want to learn how to make videos to make them later on. Mm -hmm. There's no real platform which allows them to get in touch with YouTubers who are actually doing content at the moment. And do you get to talk to some potential customers already? Yeah, so we've spoken to people in the US, Portugal, Greece. Over the weekend? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Social media, Twitter, just interviewing people. Yeah. That's fantastic. What did you enjoy about the weekend? It was very good. It was a sort of an eye-opener as to how much work is involved in starting up a business and that you really need to be dedicated to start up a business. You can't just sort of walk in and start up a business. And it's been a lot of fun. I have a great team. We work really well together. And, yeah, it's just been a lot of fun. So, and is the fun going to stop tonight or is something's um, going to happen tomorrow? Do you think that's a potential business? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And how can we follow you? Do you have a, a web page? Uh, we have or? a Facebook page and we okay. also have a Twitter page. Okay. What's uh, your Twitter page? Uh, so our Twitter page is hashtag Team Talk. You already organized. You got the t-shirt and everything. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you for your time, Thank you. Jamie. Hello, so can you tell us your name and the name of your team? Hi, I'm Helen and we are Spare Harvest. And what do you guys do at Spare Harvest? We're developing a platform to allow customers who grow fresh produce in their backyards to share that with other people that don't have fresh produce in their backyards. Excellent, can we taste them? (laughs) Not just yet, unfortunately. We're not the growers. We're the platform to support them. Have you had a chance to talk to your potential customers? Absolutely, we've actually grab some people outside of Woolworths and talk to them about it and we've talked to some market store holders at the markets as well and they, we've done some online surveys as well. And online surveys, did they like it? Like that something they want? Absolutely, 100% of all our customers told us they'd rather share their produce than actually waste it. That's awesome, mm. that's the customer validation you want. Yes, absolutely. 
and you personally, uh, what did you like about this weekend? The like-mindedness coming together. I have a limited skill set, so actually having other people with different skill set to support me and to get this idea off the ground. Excellent. And what's going to happen tomorrow after the, the weekend? Oh, Spare Harvest was always going to go ahead, but Excellent. it's actually just had an injection of energy this weekend. How can we follow you? Do you have a Facebook page or website? Yes, we have all of the social media accounts are all absolutely set up. And it's all Spare Harvest? All Spare Harvest. Okay. All the best for tonight. Thank you very much. Hi, so can you tell us uh, your name? Helen Fairweather. Helen, what's um, your team's name? You Rainfall. You Rainfall. And what do you guys do at You Rainfall? Well, we're developing an innovative new way to measure rainfall. To measure rainfall, what for? To measure ma- rainfall so that you know how much it's rained, but not only how much it's rained, how much flooding will result from the rain that happened. Ah, so for the flooding, so it's for risk purposes or safety. Yeah, that's one aspect of it. But at the moment, there is not a reliable way to get rainfall amounts across a large coverage area. Now we're only, at the moment, we can only measure rainfall at specific locations using automatic weather stations. Mm-hmm. But this is going to enable the Bureau of Meteorology's rainfall radar to be calibrated so that you get amount of rainfall, not just a colour. So is that your customer? Our customer will be segmented. There's a customer segmentation. So the customers in the initial stages will be the emergency responders. So as we develop the technology more and more, that customer base will start to spread out into people like farmers who need to know how much rainfall they've had not just at their specific location, but across their whole body. Sounds like you've got a great idea. What did you like personally about the startup again? I think the best thing is coming together with a group of people, most of whom you've never met before, and developing some common understanding around an idea that's in, just in somebody's head. And that's quite a... Because it, in this case, it was my idea, but I've experienced it previously when it was somebody else's idea. And it's quite an amazing experience to, from both sides, to come to the realization of, first of all, somebody else's idea, but also trying to get that idea to cross to somebody else. Are you saying that it's not your first time? That's right. I'm I'm not a virgin (laughs) startup. So you knew what what to expect this time. Yeah. Look, I had some idea of what to expect, and but I really wanted to be. To get my idea up this time, and I really did put a little bit of effort in to ensure that my idea did get up so that, I, up, yeah. so that we could work on it over the weekend. So, okay, tonight, the pitches, but what about tomorrow? What's going to happen? Is that the real business, you think? Oh, certainly. This is just the start. This so, the start. yeah. Are we going to be able to follow you? Do you have a Facebook page? Sure, or? yep. You Rainfall. It's Facebook. We yep. have a Twitter handle, You Rainfall. We have a website, urainfall.co, and... We'll be establishing a business, well, an ABN, an ABN be, okay. before too long, yep. and all the other business stuff that is just beyond me. But That's fantastic. You seem like you're on a roll. We'll be in our canoes traveling down that river before you know it. <laughs> all the so best all for the, tonight. Thank you very much. Tell us your name and uh, the name of your team. Hi, I'm Scott. Our team is Chameleon. We're doing a specialization in mouse customization. The ability... Well, the problem is that it's for the gamers and they're pretty dedicated to their craft. They spend many hours customizing their player and with that, why not customize your mouse? So with the research we've done, mice aren't overly customizable. They're tweakable but not customizable. We can swap. Two buttons, right? <laughs> Basically, yeah. And, and a lot of games are specialist games. So you might need six buttons for a particular game to play. And the other one, you need a thumb ball track to... With our mouse design, you can... Like a Lego block, you can pull it out, change in your different buttons. You can glam it up. So, for example, say we license with Marvel. The new movie comes out of the Avengers. So you can get your favorite Avenger, print out the part, adapt it to our basic mouse puck and there you go you've got your killer that's awesome favorite mouse to personalize and the other thing with mice is they make them average there's not a very small percentage of people who are average so you've got big hands small hands fat hands round hands so with ours you can get it to fit your hand did you get to talk to customers uh yes we did a survey and we had a thousand people participate you had how many a thousand okay over the weekend yeah fantastic well actually last night we kind of Game is a night hour, so a good time to do surveys is night time when they're all lurking and doing many hours of gameplay. 
And uh, we were lucky because there are gamers in amongst the uh, event going on and some of them are connected to big leagues, so they were able to push us through. To the network. Yeah. So that was a big help. And what about you, Scott, personally? What did you like about the the weekend? Uh, The weekend was amazing. I pitched two ideas, (laughs) but they didn't get accepted or quite understood. I didn't maybe pitch them well enough. And that also comes back to your idea of your product and who you're pitching it to. I've got a lot of young people that I was pitching to. And talking about babies probably doesn't mean a lot to them until they've experienced a never-ending crying baby. Being My product was a baby sleepies. That said, I could have packed up my bat and ball and gone home and sulked about it. But I've gone through this experience before and that doesn't solve anything. The true entrepreneur is not emotionally held by their idea. That's the danger of losing your product or even making the market because you won't accept other people's ideas or influences to help you get to the market. Or like Shark Tank, they'll take 90% of your goddamn company. But that said, you're still making a lot more money than you would have been if you were owning 100% and got no one buying your product. What about, uh, can you tell us uh, the name of the people in your team so far? Maybe. (laughs) Tom is the originator for the idea. Uh, We've got JR, who's kind of the art designer for us. Myself is kind of the creative thinker and floater. I've been going around to other groups and help uh, creative thinking problems and solutions to pitching ideas to people or uh, how do I describe this product for people to get the vibe or the feel of it. Overall, the whole presence of this weekend, I would highly recommend it to anyone who is lost, curious, or wondering if they have it in them. Because at the end of it, if you survive the weekend, the chances are you have the ability to last long enough to have a product at the end of the day. Maybe not the day, but you'll get there. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All the best for tonight. Ah, thanks. I think, I think we'll do all right. We're, like, we're sort of smashing out our presentation now. And if we're lucky... It'll be a good presentation without too much waffle. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Can you tell us your name and the, the name of your team? I'm Corinne, and this weekend the team has been called Tinkerize. Tinkerize for this weekend. And what do you guys do at Tinkerize? We make toys that captures children's curiosity and turns it into creativity and innovation pretty much excellent have you been talking to kids yeah 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 um so yesterday we took a box a tinker box out to the park and we gave it to some kids we wanted to see whether their curiosity led them to creativity today we actually asked some small younger children to come here you asked them to come to the yeah we, we, start up. Okay. we did we organized them to come here so we can video them actually playing and using our product. Awesome. Did they like it? Well, can I just say that we left a three-year-old for 40 minutes and she did not move (laughs) at all from our case. I think that's what I call customer validation. I would say so. (laughs) So what did you like about the weekend? Oh, God. Um, I really loved that I actually met people who loved my idea and my product and were passionate enough to... um, build this business idea with me and to build my product into something that I can hold. Who is that? Who's your team? My team. Eli, he's a magician. Okay. That's Rick who you want. Rick is the Superman. Yep. Nanny Jazz up here. She knows kids better than kids know themselves. And me. Awesome. Just the big kid. And uh, what do you think is going to happen um, tomorrow after the pitches and after the competition? I'm probably going to sleep. Yep. <laughs> and... <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. Do you think that's a real business? Do you think you can take it to the next step? Absolutely. Awesome. I can. I mean, I've got, I don't know if you know Rick, but I've got Rick, the Superman. Yes. And he has literally helped me lay out a plan to continue this, you know, after, after today. After so yep. thinking after it. Yeah. Well, it, He's been really good. It does help to have Superman on your side. He's so strong. All right, all the best for tonight. All the best, okay? Thanks. Thank you very much. Hi, can you tell us your name and the name of your team? Yep, sure. My name's Julia Mitchell and our team name is Digital Showbag. And who is in your team? Team consists of Alex and Matt, Tim and Weeby. And what do you guys do? We're working on an app to solve the problem of 
put it this way have you ever been to a show or a trade fair or and you get all these sample bags of all these materials and you're lugging them yeah, around yeah. and you do it really because you want the pen in there but so you're never you going to use the pen again <laughs> <laughs> then you get out of there and you might take the pen out the lollipop pop out or whatever then you chuck the bag out the back door well we're eliminating that problem so what we're doing is creating an app which means and when you go into that show baggie into the pavilion you can choose whatever store holder or whatever the product is that you want you will use an app on your phone and you'll tap the um, beacon on the side and that will download that relevant information straight onto an app for you so it's a win-win for many people it's a win-win for me i don't have to lug it all around the exhibitor doesn't have to create all these brochures and all that it's a win-win for the environment so we're looking after the environment less stuff that have to be recycled and overall it's a better experience for everybody Okay, I could use it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And have you guys managed to talk to some customers? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We've done some surveys and we've asked how people would feel about using their smartphone to do that. And so far, positive feedback. Awesome. Yeah, cool. so it's and no cost to them, so no, there, awesome. there is no Always reason. Free stuff is good, right? <laughs> yeah, it just means you have to give the pen out separately and separately. not in a bag. <laughs> And um, personally, what did you like about the, the weekend? The weekend? It's been a great opportunity to interact and meet new people, to quiet and listen and not always be the person speaking your mind, hearing concepts and ideas that you've never heard about before that, and so that you can encourage them in what they're doing. And I think you're just learning new skills and, and you're stretching. Yeah. You're putting yourself in the position where, like doing this now, you're stretching and getting out of your comfort Outside zone. Outside your comfort zone. That's, yep. that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. What about tomorrow? Do you think uh, this can be um, a real business? Absolutely. Yeah. I think we've got some great people here and um, multiple skills and abilities that we haven't discussed it yet, but yep. I think it's a common <laughs> feeling that it's there's a genuine need in the marketplace yep. and we have what we can do to make it happen. Awesome. All the best for tonight. Thank you very All much. Right. Alrighty. Thank you. So can you tell us your name and the name of your team? Uh, my name is Franklin, and then the name of our team is Follow Me. Follow Me. Yeah. What, what do you guys do at Follow Me? At Follow Me, we are trying to connect local people and travelers together. So imagine you have a your traveler in a new place, and you want to see places like the best cafes, hidden party places, hidden gems in the city. So you want to connect to a local person to show you around. So that's what our website is going to be. So it's connecting the traveler to the local people to show them around like the best parts of the city. And uh, did you get some customer validation done? Yeah, we did some. We did a lot of surveys, like hundreds of surveys on SurveyMonkey and Google. We also went around to different hotels, to backpackers and malls and on the street. And people said that the idea is really good. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, who do you have in your team to help you? We are around 10 people. 10 people. In the team, yeah. Can you remember all the names? No. Maybe if I look at them, <laughs> I can know their name, yeah. But not elaborate. What did you like about the weekend? The weekend, maybe, uh, I can't say I like the headaches that I have now, but <laughs> I like the team that I have. They're really, you know, into it. <laughs> and they have... What I like about our team is like we are really diverse. We have some business people, we have developers and designers, and we have some financial people and some strategies, and it's just a really good team. Yeah. And what were your expectations personally before the weekend? Did you know what was going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen. I didn't <laughs> even expect that my that I'm going to pitch or I'm going to join another team. Yep. Yeah. You didn't know? No. Awesome. I'm well. just playing it by the ear. Yeah. All the best for tonight. Thank you. All the best. So can you tell us uh, your name and the name of your team? Yes, I'm Charlie. Team name is Noshi. And yeah, it's a three-person team, so we're a small team. But uh, we have a big idea. Who do you have in your team? Uh, So the team, including me, is uh, Beck and Jim. And uh, what's what's the big idea? So the big idea, Noshi is a food uh, meal kit delivery service where we organize and source local ingredients within 150 kilometers. And we also partner with chefs and iconic restaurants in the Sunshine Coast area to create restaurant quality meals with chef curated recipe cards that you can cook in your own home and they get delivered to your door. 
And with a team of just three, were you guys able to talk to your customers? Or Yes, we were, absolutely. We were. Yeah, yeah. We had great response. So yesterday we went out to the um, uh, supermarkets at Kiwana and also just locally here. And uh, we had a great response. The, the, it was a very positive response rate. Um, it helped us identify our target market. Some of us um, spoke to uh, different segments of the market and some of us uh, were able to hone in on more people that we originally thought were, were our market and that uh, essentially proved to us that we're on the right track. Oh, awesome. So what do you have to say when people say, oh, a team of three is just too small to start a business? I would say not so true because the biggest thing I think I've learned from Startup Weekend is the ability to be nimble and make decisions very quickly based on information at very short notice. I think having just a small team has allowed us to just make quick decisions, yeah. either discard uh, original ideas that we had that we knew that were, that were going nowhere and quickly pivot to something, something new. However, our idea has essentially remained on track, which has been really good as well. And um, so you're on track for tonight for the pitches, but what about tomorrow? Like, is that going to be your real business? What do you think? I really hope so. I'm looking forward to what the, the feedback from the judges is like yeah, today. Yeah. That's going to help us maybe decide if, if this is going to be a, a viable product going, going forward. We certainly hope so, but who knows? All right. All the best for tonight. Thank you very much. You. All right. Can you tell us uh, your name and the name of your team? Cool. Uh, my name is Zach, and our team is called Manda Monsters. Manda Monster. Who do you have on your team? Uh, we have Gail here. Tom. Gail's uh, uh, Gail's working on our market research. Tom's doing our design. We have Jeff, who is uh, he's basically just keeping everything together. Excellent. And we have Katrina, who is a creative writer, who's helped a lot, and Adrian, who is helping us with our finances. Yeah. Sounds like a good mix. And what do you guys do? Uh, so what we do is we uh, create a better way for Chinese teachers to teach the language. So right now on the market, there's just boring, uh, irrelevant materials. And every Chinese teacher around the world is right now just struggling to engage their students. So we want to change that. And as a teacher of Chinese myself, like yeah. I'm really looking forward to using this product myself. And did, you, did you get to talk to other customers, potential customers? Yeah, well, uh, yesterday we spoke to Dean Sung Tom, and uh, what was supposed to be a five-minute conversation just turned into an hour of us chatting. He studies at Montessori School. Yeah. He studies Chinese. And uh, apart from validating some of my ideas and disproving some of my ideas he just came up with some really really good ones of his own so that was awesome. surprising and really yeah. what, what did you like personally about the weekend well i came in really not knowing what to expect and just some like some just concerns that i couldn't really articulate i was just i, I don't know but coming here it's it's like a First thing you notice is just everyone's so friendly. You can just walk up to someone and say, "Hi, my name's Zach," and they'll just they'll just start talking to you. And so beforehand, because uh, I'm in ENT three one one, every time Riata would talk about the startup weekend, you just see her eyes glaze over. And like, what goes on in this startup weekend? You know. So Rita is your uh, entrepreneurship lecturer, right? Yep, yep. And and along with Renee. And you didn't know what was she what she's talking about. Well, kind of, but I didn't understand why her eyes would glaze over every time she'd talk about it, you know? And now I really do. It's just like a bunch of smart, nice, interesting people getting together. And I've just been so amazed by the help I've gotten. Like, these guys haven't asked for anything. And they've just spent the whole weekend yeah. helping me develop my idea. And the coaches, too, it's been really... We say in Chinese, Zhong Yan Ni Ai, and it means... Good advice is tough on the ears. And, uh, Good advice is tough on the ears, yeah. Nice. Yep. <laughs> and so that's what the coaches have done for me. They've really helped shape me up. All right. Well, I don't know how to say good luck in Chinese, but good luck. <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. All right. Can you tell us uh, your name? Yeah. My name's Adrian Finis. And can you tell us about your experience of the startup weekend? Yeah, sure. Um, basically, I pitched on Friday night an idea um, trigger to happy. And that was for uh, something I want to do for children on the autism spectrum, particularly. And I was voted okay on the first on the Friday evening, but then on the Saturday I didn't actually gather a team around me. So you know, I don't know whether it was my pitch or me or or what it was, but nonetheless, I kept going to a degree and then let go and thought, okay, just. It's going to be what it is. And then some other people came up and said, we really like your idea. We'd like you to do something. 
and so I kind of went and sat at a table by myself for a while and one of the coaches came along gave me some ideas really great ideas so that was really cool and gradually I had other people coming in and talking to me one-on-one but I didn't really have another member as a team so I had some part-timers and some really good input from quite a number of people including children and you know so it was a bit disappointing in one regard but on the other side in the end the decision had to be made that I had to join another team and and that was okay too because um, it was it's as valuable to participate in somebody else's team as to actually have my own thing and I'm not letting go of my own thing anyway what I've done is actually found people here over the weekend that can help me and support me to have an ongoing relationship beyond the startup weekend so it was really good because it's just not the end of the road. Yeah. You know? So what would you advise to people who's going to come next year? I would advise them to get their pitch sorted yeah. <laughs> for a start and make it a really good one and a very vibrant one. Simple and vibrant and very clear. I also think because I'm dealing with a sensitive area, people were a bit spooked by that to some degree, which is why people have come up very quietly and said, really like your idea. I've just had someone say now, you know, we really liked your idea and how did you go? And I said, well, I had to let it go, but I've not let it go because I'm going to carry on with it. So, and I've had coaches come up and do the same as well, say, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. So, you know, it doesn't matter. Let the experience be what it is. And if you end up not having a team behind you, uh, maybe if I persevered long enough, you know, sitting at the table by myself early enough, it may have changed things, but then I don't know. And at some point in time, you've just got to let it go. And I'm happy. I was okay to let it go. You know, Perfect. and it's it's. I think you've just got to be willing to just come along, give it a crack, and then if it doesn't happen, don't give up on it. Don't give up. That's right. So, and I'm not a person to give up because I've been working on this now for five or six years, okay. and I. But what I've done, what it's done, is shown me some of the people who have shown me some direction and some products and some uh, other contacts and information that I can use to consolidate my ideas, get very clear about my direction so that then I can continue with it beyond here. All right. Thank you so much and uh, good luck for tonight. Yeah, thank Thank you. you. Hi, can you tell us uh, your name and the name of your team? Hi, my name is Andrew Lowe and the name of the team is Clinker, Cloud Linker. Clinker, Clinker, Linker. That's right. And what do you guys do there? Uh, well, uh, with um, Victoria and Paul, one of the frustrations that we have both in our personal and professional lives is we've got information and files stored across so many different cloud apps, right? And yep. to bring it all together is really problematic. Yep. Yeah, and we spend too much time looking for stuff. So we're trying to develop a mobile app that enables you to log in once and then connect to all these different cloud apps and then be able to say for this particular project, I need five files from Dropbox three files from Basecamp, two files from Trello, and that's the combination of information that's relevant for the particular project and start creating and saving workspaces depending on what activities you undertake. You know that organizing the startup weekend, we really needed that tool. (laughs) Yeah, I've heard. I've heard that. And and I'm I'm great that it's fulfilling a real need. And that's the important thing. I needed to use the weekend to validate that customers actually see this as a problem and see that there's a potential solution through our idea. So how did you get a chance to talk to customer I mean it's just the three of you oh uh, yeah I know we're a small team so phone calls phone calls yeah phone calls so we uh, I work uh, in a small business to help uh, small businesses transition to using cloud apps so I've got clients yep. so I rang them spoke to them yeah we use surveys as well as a mechanism to uh, introduce customers we use Facebook we use Twitter and also the people here I and think the people here. yeah and the people here let's not forget the people here yep. you know they're the in fact they're part of my target market they're productivity they enthusiasts mm. and the people who want to make their lives faster, cheaper, easier. And um, how many people total do you think you talk to? In terms of face-to-face and phone conversations, we spoke to about 30 people. That's really good. Yeah, 30 people. And we got about 50 responses from the surveys. And uh, 90, about 90, more than 90% were really excited about the idea. Fantastic. So I think we sort of validated the idea. The hard part now is what happens next. 
Well, that was yeah. my next question. What, yeah. what happens next? What tomorrow? What's going to go, you know, after <sighs> the competition? It is a competition. Look, regardless of what the outcome of the competition is, I think I validated the idea. Yep. Yeah, so I have a few ideas now in terms of moving forward. A Kickstarter is one way to go. Yeah. You know, to get funding, some venture capitalists. Yep. Hopefully through a pitching tonight, some businesses might be interested yep. in a pilot implementation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, could it be a, the it way to go? Yeah, it is my target market. And, you know, I'm all about having minimal products get them out there and then start adding features as we go so I think we should be able to get something workable maybe in the next three to six months awesome yeah well, that's the, the plan thank you. The best. thank yeah. you thanks very much can you tell us your name and your role with uh, Startup Weekend my name is Rieta Skiepers and I'm the lead organizer for Startup Weekend in 2015 all right and why do you organize Startup Weekend well, I guess i am sort of become a startup junkie to an extent. <laughs> I was involved in 2014 for the first time with Startup Weekend and it was just such an amazing experience and so just such community building that happens out of it that it just wins all around and I wanted to be part of it again. And so what was the difference between last year and this year? Well, being a lead organizer is much harder. Like I had to be responsible for more things. Last year I was sort of along for the ride and could do the fun bits that I liked. And now I had to cross the T's and dot the I's. That was the hard part. I'm a kind of ideas person. So I love to see the creation process and that's fabulous. But I would forget to order the T-shirts because I put the wrong address line in. And that's kind of like details that I don't really care about it which then people don't have t-shirts go figure <laughs> and you've got some of your students are in the startup weekend how, how yeah so I was really tired of business plans being creative writing exercises so I thought wouldn't it be awesome if I could just have my students through this real life experience and to do that for one course, I've included inside the course. And all I ask students afterwards is just think about what it meant for them, kind of write a short reflection with some selfies. And uh, for my um, other class, I'm sort of sponsoring the ones who I think has potential or who looks interested or maybe has got creative or technical talents that maybe they can find their inner entrepreneur. Who knows? And you had some pretty good success last year with some of the, st- the students keeping the business on what about this year do you think oh it's so hard to say because um it's it's quite different and i think what you learn from last year is you cannot predict uh what will happen and everything depends on people's own uh goals and what, where they want to go and and their persistence to an extent i i learned from my students and i guess what i've learned from last year from the ones who keep on doing it are the ones who put a lot of energy into it. It is a lot of energy to move beyond Startup Weekend and you're kind of tired afterwards. So, you know, you come down from this high. So it's almost a reassessment. And can all the teams get together again? People have got other commitments. Yeah, Yeah, so that's hard. I think just if you can just take away from the Startup Weekend as a learning experience, what it meant to you personally, then you can be entrepreneurial in whatever direction you choose. And it doesn't have to be a startup. What will be your final advice for people who will attend next year? I'll be open-minded. Um, come with a learning orientation because even if your idea doesn't get up, you take so much away from it. And the coaches and the other people that you meet here are just fabulous. You become part of a community. So I would say let your own idea go and just expose yourself to all kinds of ideas that are out there. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Hi guys, I've got um, the facilitator and the co-facilitator of Startup Weekend Sunshine Coast 2015. Uh, do you guys want to introduce yourself? I'll get started. Yep. I'm Catherine Kitney and I'm yeah, co-facilitating tonight. I also work at Fishburners and have come up from Sydney. Thanks. So I'm Marcus Holland Eichland. I am originally from Norway and uh, yeah, I used to uh, study on the Sunshine Coast and I'm now doing the uh, facilitating part of the startup weekend really cool and so it's not your first startup weekend obviously so why do you keep doing it so yeah it's probably my 10th startup weekend so i've done numerous and i've actually had every role there's possibly you can have in in the organization i've been a participant i've been organizing i've been the lead organizer i've been the facilitator and i don't know it's pretty much addictive because and i think it's because of the people i think the people draws me in 
you know, these are people who's, they're not your typical, just, it's not like a business event. It's people who wants really to make, wants to make a change or wants to do something or create something. Yeah. So it's interesting people. That's what I'm trying to say. It's, it's interesting people with interesting ideas. And I don't know, there's a lot of energy, right? Yeah, I think it's, I guess, quite similar for me. I haven't been to 10 Startup Weekends yet. This is my fifth. And I think the reason I keep coming back is I just like being involved in something that's, I guess, what Marcus said. is like you go to other events, but this is something really unique. People actually are giving up their whole weekend. They're giving up 54 hours on no sleep, running on like little food. They're basically surviving on coffee. And the fact that they're willing to do that, that's pretty unique to me. And I think I've never really experienced any other event where they do that. And I think being part of that is really cool. And so. I, think, uh, like, I think it comes back, back to, because it's Startup Weekend as an organization, I mean, it's all about the community, right? So it's about these values you find here, which I find really, it's just pushing the whole you know, agenda. And yeah. it's about the individuals, it's about you know, openness, it's about collaboration, it's about sharing. It's about pitching an idea and not being sort of worried about, oh, if I pitch my idea, someone's going to steal it. It's about, you know, pitching an idea, putting some accountability on the idea and pushing you forward and having your... The crowd and the community to drive you forward to do something to execute. So and everyone can have an idea, but the execution is really the uh, the key. Hey, I think yeah, and it's a, it's a safe environment to do it. Like if you have an idea, or if you, for me, like I didn't really know about the startup world before Startup Weekend. I knew about entrepreneurship and knew about these things, but I think the, the beauty of Startup Weekend is you can actually create something because they're using technology to do it as well, and it has the possibility to actually get sales in the weekend and actually validate the idea and figure out like if your idea is just something that's going to fail or if it might actually succeed and you get to sort of see what you can create in one weekend and what you're capable of and it gives you the confidence to go out and maybe do something on your own that you may have never you know, even thought about before. And the, the overall tagline of Startup Weekend is like, no talk, all action. And I think that yeah. speaks really well with what's going on here. Yeah. What, what did you like about this cohort, like this Startup Weekend? Did you have a couple of stories about the Actually, I the thought room? they were really funny. I've never seen this before, but the, one of the Friday night pitches, a woman comes up with a freaking cape, like a Superman, Superwoman cape, and she does this uh, cool... Uh, pitch and uh, really confident really just down to the minute and so I, I don't know I, I, and there was another guy an Asian guy and he was just really funny right <laughs> he was just the coolest There's guy I've seen ever yeah yeah all right well thank you so much and uh, all the best for the rest of the end of the weekend yay Mark, you are one of the judges tonight. Yes, what you yes. Think? Oh, wow. What a tough job we had tonight. Uh, 14 pitches, almost all of them very high quality. It took us a while to debate that out in the back it corner did. there. It did. We went around a few times with pros and cons. We're trying to work out who's going to have the more success and who did the better job and who's done the better preparation. It was a tough job. It really Don't was. To any, anything this man is saying. <laughs> <laughs> At least without a beer. <laughs> it's, it's a good comment because you just got back from... Uh, um, from where? Uh, yes, I just got back a few days ago from Silicon Valley. I've been over there with some startups for a couple of weeks, uh, introducing them to the to the bigger wide world of angel investment and uh, the tech industry. And you know, it's six million people involved in the IT industry there in the so Bay Area. So, how do we compare here on the little Sunshine Coast? Well, actually, I also went over to Austin. I'm just sitting there. I saw 13 pitches in Austin last week. Okay. I saw 14 here tonight, and the the caliber's close. Nice. Yeah, oh, okay. I could see us having a thousand people in the audience without too long without too far in the that. future thank you so much all right pleasure have a be on us <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm with uh, two more judges uh, from uh, the competition tonight can you tell us your name stephanie moroz and mark paddenberg all right and what do you guys think of all the pitches you've been through i was extremely impressed with the pitches both the ideas were excellent and also the style of the pitches was very good they were clearly coached on what information to transmit and how to do it in five minutes, which is excellent. And I was really impressed with the quality of the ideas as well, thinking that it, it is a regional competition and um, so many people having such great ideas is excellent. Not bad for a regional area, isn't it? It's excellent. Yeah. Uh, ditto, uh, just awesome. I, I just um, so impressed with the professionalism, the commitment, the time that all the teams put in the 54 hours over this weekend and their final pitches. I mean, I had the pleasure of seeing them on Friday, but Sunday night, they've just so much more improved and uh, 
unbelievable. So happy. Thank you. And so what do you think can be done to help them after the competition? What would be their, your advice to them? My advice would be to find anyone who's willing to give them advice and guidance in how to get forward with this. Persistence beats the resistance. So stick with it. Work hard and you'll be surprised how far you come. We've got on the 10th of June, we've got Michael Eels from Business Model Inc. coming up. So make use of those um, free one-day workshops and the other events that are on around the place. I really encourage attendees today, if they're not part of the Silicon Coast Meetup Group, Facebook group, they should join it because there's 370 really active, uh, motivated members on there. People that can help you and assist you and finance you and share the journey of this wonderful entrepreneurial spirit on the Sunshine Coast. Thank you so much. Enjoy the party and thank you again for giving your time for today. Thank you. All right, so uh, I'm just walking to uh, a new visitor. And um, what's your name? What do you do? Uh, Vivi Turbals. I'm the executive officer at Sunshine Coast Environment Council and Environmental NGO. And uh, so you walked into your first startup weekend. And so what happened? Oh, man, a roller coaster. That's what happened. Yeah, it was absolutely awesome. You know, I, I came here just thinking uh, when I signed up, I thought, you know, it'd be great. Uh, meet a few new, new people. Uh, few networks, different skills, different way of thinking about the world and from the uh, from the community sector. But I've just had the best time. It's just been absolutely fantastic, really challenging intellectually, really challenging in terms of working with other people, but absolutely terrific. I find everybody really collegial, uh, just a really great spirit of everybody just wanting to support people, help develop ideas and, and move things forward. It's been fantastic. And they're all locals. They just all live here. Yeah, absolutely. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. You know, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, and, and so Marcus was just saying that there's the Silicon Coast. So I'm definitely joining that because I just want more of this. It's yeah. awesome. I want to stay in touch with these people. I want to be involved in this space because it's exciting. It's fun. And there's some great people. Yeah. They're doers. They're the people that make things happen. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, like I work in the community in the NGO sector and we have a bit of a tendency to sort of think that we have the moral high ground and to look down on business. And, and it's like, no, 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 these people are just as committed to moving our society forward. They make different value judgments sometimes. They have a different way of going about it. But uh, there's great energy and great passion here. So, yeah, I'm really excited having come here. Yeah, I mean, nothing stops us from having, you know, non-for-profit uh, startup next year. I mean, that's possible. Absolutely, and I don't think you necessarily need to be a not-for-profit startup. You know, there was a couple of what really are social enterprises yep. pitched tonight. Yep. And I think that's, you know, we need to learn from each other. I was just talking with one of the judges, you know, like for the last, you know, couple of years, I've been working on donor development, you know, recruiting volunteers. How do I move my volunteers from volunteers to donors, from donors to regular donors, from regular donors to higher level donors? That's basically customer development. You know, I'm trying to upsell them. So, you know, what we understand very similar principles. We might call them differently, we might have different labels for them, but we do very similar things. And I think it's really important that we actually mix a little bit more and, and learn a, bit, a little bit from each other. Excellent. So we'll see you at the next Silicon Coast meeting then. Yeah, absolutely. And the next year startup and probably... And the next year startup. Uh, and I'll definitely be looking for another startup weekend between now and next year because yeah, it's just been great. Look around. There is more happening around. Next week, there's one in Toowoomba. Yeah, I, 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 won't do, I won't bail out on my family again, but definitely 12 months is too long, too far away. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Have fun. Easy, mate. Thanks.